Uh, welcome back to the Southampton View. What a game that was against Ipswich. First of all, I know you lost Southampton fans, but thank you. From a neutral point of view, that was an incredible game to watch. Let's find out how it was for those that were there who had travelled to Portman Road. And we're going to obviously preview the Blackburn game this weekend as well. Um, we've got Joe, our regular Saints fan. How are you, Joe? Good evening. Yeah, good. Thank you. And because we're getting to crunch season, we've got a guest uh, who's also representing Saints Twitter as a royalty on there. Mikey, good evening. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thank you very much. All right. Shall we go through it then? Um, from a neutral point of view, I thought Southampton was superb up to the last 10 minutes. Um, Mikey, give us your view of the, of the game. Yeah, I think from a neutral point of view, it was a, a great game, but unfortunately, getting in at half 11 last night, <laughs> having lost. And I think it just kind of epitomises our, our current form and, and, and our season, to be fair. Like, the performance at times was was outstanding. I think it's been a joy to watch, but you can't get points for playing well at the end of the day. They came away scoring three goals. We've only scored two, so playing well means absolutely nothing. And on the back of the, um, the Borough result on uh, on um, Friday as well, it's been pretty uh, damaging Easter weekend for us, us Saints lot. Yeah, because even even with your game in hands that you, that you have, you're still six points, aren't you sure? Um, Joe, um, I, I hate to do this because I don't I don't like it, but Bazuna um, has come in for uh, a lot of criticism following that game. Mm-hmm. Is it unfair criticism? No, I don't think so. I think their first their first goal near post he should be saving that any day. And the last goal was just ridiculous. I know there's there's six players in front of him that are just staring at the ball, staring at the player, but he's just he's gotta do better. Just gotta do much better. Do you think I've I've seen so many tweets this, so I don't want to jump on this bandwagon, but they're basically saying he's been the difference between you going up and going and, and staying where you are because he's not a first class goalkeeper unlike you know other other teams have. Is that how much of that do you agree with, Mikey? Yeah, if I'm honest, um, I think at times he's been a little bit of a scapegoat. But then I think definitely recently, I think the criticism has been has been fair. Like we said, that first goal last night, like when it went in, I literally looked at my mate and thought, like, he's edge of the box. It's your near post. Yeah, he's hit it well, but a professional goalkeeper shouldn't be beaten at his near post. And granted, he is good with his feet. And obviously under Martin, that's what he's been told to do. But yeah, if I'm honest, I'm not overly sold on him just yet. Um, Joe, I asked you this last week, I'll ask you again. Automatics are definitely gone now. Yeah. Like, even if for some godforsaken reason we do win the next eight games, but it's not looking likely... I just, I don't think that, one, I don't think we deserve to go up automatically, and two, I just don't think that the three above us are going to slow down. So, West Brom away it is. <laughs> well, I will remind you that for the, in that 22-game unbeaten run, you were saying how much you were enjoying life in the Championship. Yeah, you wouldn't mind yeah. having another year. You're going to have your friends Portsmouth joining you next year as well. Yeah. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Why not hang around for another year? <clears throat> I mean... I wouldn't mind it, but the problem is we'd we'd lose all of our better players, so it'd just be a complete rebuild job. And I think a lot of fans are thinking that they don't trust the board with with that, given the news that came out yesterday as well with Wilcox. So, yeah. Mikey, do you, do you think there is added pressure to Southampton of the others in that playoff mix to get promoted this year because of you know, financial issues, best players leaving? Oh, hundred percent. And like, it concerns me the fact that like, I'd go on Twitter and I'm seeing like people saying, "Oh, I'm quite enjoying the championship." That's this, that, and the other. But like, the bigger picture is like, if we don't go up this year, there'll be no Walker Peters, there'll be no Harwood Bellis, there'll be no Che Adams, probably no Downs. Like, our players that have performed this year won't be sticking around again. So then there's the concern of, are we going to be a mid-table championship? 
and a championship side that's going to be in that league for for many years to come. But I think people kind of need to wake up and realise it's either this season or we're going to be plenty of seasons in this level. Yeah. Um, Joe, anything need to change for the Blackburn game for you? Yeah, I mean, I would like Walker Peters to come back in. Well, obviously he's got, you know, given free suspension. Um, I think still trying to shoehorn uh, Jack Stevens in. Like, I would like to see a proper left back. Yes, he was good defensively yesterday, but I just I just feel like he's trying to shoehorn him in. And I would like to see Arebo still keep his play because I thought he was he was one of the shining lights yesterday. Okay. Mikey, you go along with that? Yeah, yeah. I think it was all a shock to us seeing Walker Peters out yesterday. And but yeah, he's got to come back in. I think for me that's the only only real change. And I agree with what Joe's saying. I think that's been a bit of a uh Stevens almost being forced to play has been quite a common thing. And I think fans are cottoning on to that now. But yeah, pretty much with what Joe said on that, to be fair. Okay. All right, then let's bring in uh our Blackburn fan. This is the uh, the uh, Graham Souness Derby. I want to call it. I'm sure I'll think of better. I think I have better links between Blackburn and Southampton than uh, than uh, than Souness. Harry, how are you? First of all, looking forward to this one. Yeah, good mate. Definitely feeling a lot better after the long-awaited Eustace first victory. Um, yeah. But yeah, we know this is going to be a tough game. Yeah, you just like playing teams in red and white stripes, don't you? And uh, here comes here comes another one. Uh, you won't have fond memories of the reverse picture of this one, Harry, though. You were down at St. Mary's back in December when uh, this was a 4-0 thrashing. Um, or oh, actually, was it a thrashing in your view? Yeah, I think that was one of the worst worst games for us this season. I thought we were really poor. Uh, but that was in the middle of uh, Southampton really sort of kicking on, uh, pushing towards those top two places. I know they've had a bit of a wobble. Uh, but we know this is going to be such a tough game. They've got a lot of firepower going forward. Uh, man for man, they're such a strong side and we've got to be careful. Yeah, you too fair when you came up against John Eustace earlier when he was at Birmingham. Um, how does how does Saints beat a Eustace Blackburn side, Harry? Because you're no mugs at home, are you? No, well, it's interesting. It seems that Eustace has uh, discovered that the, the style he wanted to implement at the start wasn't working. He didn't have it long enough to implement the style that he wants to play. So he's sort of kind of found a happy happy medium between uh, the way we used to play under Thomason while implementing a bit of uh, his style to it as well. It's going to be an interesting one. Obviously, they they'll, they'll have they'll dominate possession. Uh, they'll probably have the line the the lion's share of the chances. Uh, we know how dangerous Adam Armstrong can be, but we also know how wasteful he can be. Uh, is if you've got a player like that going forward, he, he could score you a hat trick, but he could, but he could go missing, blunder eight chances in a game. Um, so I think it's if they've got those forwards free firing. I know they've got so many options up there. Um, it's going to be a big job on our hands for our defenders, but we have looked more defensively solid recently. Uh, so yeah, it's whether Southampton can get those attacking players flowing because that's where they win this game. I think. Okay, Mikey, do you think you can uh, stop the league's top goal scorer from bagging a couple in your net this weekend? Difficult one um, because defensively we do look a little bit um, fragile at the moment, and uh, we struggle to keep clean sheets the majority of the season. In all fairness, and yeah, he's uh, he's bagging goals for fun, so it's going to be a, a hard challenge. But let's just hope that our uh, our four players are on um, on fire on Saturday. Okay. Uh, Joe, controversial view this one, but I saw it written once, so I'll repeat it. Uh, Southampton should just watch West Brom games now because that's the team you're going to be playing in the semi-finals. So play the kids. You're not going any higher than where you are. You're not going any lower than where you are. Just focus on beating West Brom in the in a month's time. Yeah, I mean... I think it was said tongue-in-cheek, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a fair question. I mean, it probably will be playing West Brom, but I mean, we still have to be very wary that there are only eight points between us and and fifth. So we've got to be really careful not to be sucked any lower, closer to the chase and pack. But I think we'll be all right. Okay. All right, some score predictions then for uh, this one, Harry. You're at home. You can go first. Sorry. 
Yeah, well, there's been a bit of a, a raising spirits last few weeks uh, at Ewood. Uh, ever since we went to a back four, we started to look a lot better. But we're no, we're, we, let's not be silly. We know how good Southampton are. They'll go into this game as favourites. Uh, it's easy to get carried away after one big result. Um, but I think I think Southampton probably win here. It's a tough game to follow up. Of, uh, we'd like to get a good run going to sort of separate us from the bottom three. Uh, so a bit unfortunate that we're playing against such a strong side right after the win. Uh, I'll go that Southampton narrowly win it 2-1. Joe? Joe? I'm going to go 3-2 Southampton. And Mikey? Oh, I'm going to round it off with a hard for 2 one Saints win. Okay, nice one. All right, thank you, Harry, for joining us on the Saints View. I'll just uh, pop you off for a second. Enjoy the game, mate. Thank you very much. Um, all right, you two. Player of the month for March, then. Um, you can take one each. Um, you may decide on the same one. <laughs> Who's stuck out for you? I'll let you go first, mate. <sighs> I'm well. It's, it's going to be a tricky one because March wasn't particularly great. But I mean, I'm going to have to give it to David Brooks. I think. I think all the, what he has played, he's been superb, and he was the difference maker against Birmingham. So yeah, Brooksy. Okay. All right, and Mikey. Purely because he notched his twentieth goal of the season, like for for a striker to do that for us. I'm going to have to give it to uh, to Adam Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. He's also creeping, creeping up in the assists league uh, as noticed as noticed yeah. as well, which is which is phenomenal, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Last uh, last question then for you. It's a big one. And so, to fans, if you're watching this, please put your answer to this in the comments below. What is the most important or most enjoyable 90th minute goal that you have seen scored in a Saints shirt? We're doing this because there's been some huge. Uh, 90th minute goals scored um, at least of all the one against you yesterday um, in the championship but what what goal in the 90th plus minute have you enjoyed the most um, Joe I'll come to you first on this one um, Shane Long against Liverpool in the League Cup semi-final that was just absolute pandemonium superb good I'll give you bonus points for it being a goal against Liverpool as well fantastic <laughs> and Mikey yeah, so that was mine. But to say another <laughs> one, mine's going to have to be oh, when I was growing up, Brighton away at the With Dean on the athletics track, Jose Fonte, <laughs> last minute header um, that put up Stan behind the goal, I think nearly claps on all of us things. <laughs> <hands went mental. laughs> so, yeah, if it, it was going to be longies, but I'll, I'll say something different. I'll go with that. Okay, nice one, both of you. If you can think of any other 90th minute Southampton goals that they haven't mentioned, you know what to do. Put them in the comments below and put a like on the video. Thank you both. Enjoy your uh, trip to Ewood Park. Wrap up warm. It's not uh, not as warm as the coasts, you know, up here in the <laughs> up here in the north. All right, cheers, fellas. Cheers. Thank you.